Hi, this is John Burek, Executive Editor at PCMag.com. Today we're going to talk about what you need to know when you're ready to buy an SSD. The form factor, the interface, and the bus type. These are three things about an SSD that are quite frequently confused and sometimes also overlap. So let's take a look at the SSDs we have on the table in front of us here to get an idea of what each of these things mean. The form factor of the SSD, or the shape, is the thing that's most important to know before you start to purchase. What we have here is an example of all the different form factors that you'll find on the market today. This Intel Optane drive, for example, comes in the PCI Express form factor. This is meant for use in a desktop. You'll plug it into a slot on your motherboard. The most frequently found kind of SSD from years back, and even to an extent today, is the 2.5 inch drive. This is the same form factor as a laptop hard drive, and you can use these both in certain laptops that have a bay for them, and in a desktop PC that has room for it and has the serial ATA interface. The other SSDs that we have on the table here are what are known as M.2 SSDs. These are small SSDs that are used in both laptops and desktops. Some laptops have compatibility with them, some desktops do, not all do. But to take one out over here, we have a, a Samsung model that's 80 millimeters long, and it's what's known as an M2 2280 SSD. So we've talked about form factors here, but those are not necessarily the same thing as the interfaces on these drives. And the interface is what actually is used to connect to the laptop or desktop that you're installing the SSD in. So for example, this, as we mentioned, is a PCI Express interface and can only fit in a desktop. This model uses what's known as the Serial ATA interface, and you can see on the edge here there's a uh, blade connector. It's actually a two-part connector. One part is for the uh, power that is delivered to the drive, and the other half is for the data that travels over it. The M2 drives here, on the other hand, use a single bladed connector on the end, and this goes into a slot on the motherboard, as I'll show you in a moment. So we've spoken about interface and form factor, but when you're ready to purchase SSD for your system, you also have to factor in something known as the bus type. And the bus basically is the data pathway from the SSD to the system. You need to know the kind that you have in some cases in order to buy a compatible SSD. So for example, any serial ATA drive you buy, such as this one, will use the serial ATA bus. So in this case, the interface and the bus are the same thing. However, with an M2 drive, you may have one of two buses, the serial ATA bus, which is the same as the bus that was used on this two and a half inch drive, or it may use the PCI Express bus, which is what is used on this PCI Express drive. M2 drives go into a slot on the board that can support, depending on the slot, one or the other type of bus, or in some cases, both types of bus. But you need to know what your system supports and what the drive supports before you can know what is compatible with your system. How do you know what you can upgrade when the time comes? For instance, if you have a desktop PC that you're building or upgrading, the example being this motherboard here, it definitely supports serial ATA, which are these ports along the edge here. You can just plug a cable into that to put a serial ATA drive on it. But what about other drive types? You may, for instance, have the ability to put an M2 drive on one of these uh, motherboards. For instance, if you look at this board here, we have two M2 slots between the PCI Express slots over here. And as you can see, You can install, as you can see, it's not that simple. Um, <laughs> in the M2 slots, there are holes along the length of it that you can adjust according to the length of the M2 drive that you're installing. So this 80 millimeter drive will go on the 80 mark here. So we'll give it a shot, snap it in. Now, if I were installing this for real, I would have taken the screw out over here and then screwed it down onto that post. But the idea here is that you can install a longer or a shorter drive just by adjusting this screw. The thing is, most M2 drives you'll find are 80 millimeters long, and the boards will already have that screw in that place. As another example, we have a shorter 2242 drive here, which is 42 millimeters long. And if we wanted to install that on this drive here, we would move the screw over here and snap this in like so. Now, one thing to bear in mind about these drives is you do need to know, as I mentioned before, the bus type of the drive. These are both what is known as a PCI Express NVMe drive. And what you need to make sure is that the slots on your motherboard support a PCI Express NVMe drive. In some cases, the slot may only support a SATA drive, in which case you would need a SATA bus M2 drive. Now, let's say, for example, you're upgrading a laptop, such as this ASUS gaming laptop we have here. We've taken the screws out already, so we'll pop it open. Now inside this system here, you have a couple of options, but what you'll notice over here is an M2 slot, which is already populated with a drive. So you may wish to, for instance, put a higher capacity or a faster drive in a system like this. But again, what you would want to know about your laptop is A, what type of drive does it take and what form factor, in this case M2, B, what interface does it use, in this case, again, M2, 
and see what kind of bus does it use. In this case, either PCI Express or SATA. Once you know those three things, you can buy a drive that you can use as an upgrade in here. So you've figured out the bus type, the interface, and the form factor of the SSD that you want. But how do you tell, once you narrow that down to a group of SSDs, the differences among them? There's a bunch of different things there. There's the type of memory that's used in the SSD, and there's also the capacity. So for instance, if you look at this group of SSDs, we have a variety of memory types included here. There's what's known as MLC and TLC memory. MLC stands for multi-level cell, TLC stands for triple level cell. The idea with the different memory types is that using different amounts of bits per cell allows for greater or lesser endurance ratings. Typically, MLC is considered to be a more premium type of memory than TLC, and you will find TLC in most consumer and budget drives these days. One further bit of marketing that you may find uh, surrounding your SSD purchase is whether the drive uses 3D NANDs or 3D memory cells. Essentially, all this means is that the manufacturer of the memory cells has managed to layer cells one on top of the other, whereas before, uh, the typical manufacturer process was to make the uh, cells planar or flat across the cells. The idea there is with 3D, you can pack more cells in more efficiently at a lower cost. Another differentiator among drives is the TBW or terabytes written rating. This is something that you can use to compare like drives of the same capacity. The idea here is that the manufacturer knows what the capabilities of the drive are based on the type of memory cell technology that it uses and gives it a rating for how many terabytes you can write to it before the drive starts to wear out. Now, in SSDs do wear out. Over time, if you write to them over and over and over again over the course of many years, the cells begin to wear out and can no longer store data. And then what the drive will do is what's called decommission the cells, which means you get less capacity as the cells go out of commission. So the idea here is that at a given capacity, if you have a higher terabytes written rating that is considered a more premium drive at a given manufacturer's line than a like capacity drive with a lower terabytes written rating. Now related to the terabytes written rating is the warranty length. Now a manufacturer is going to look at a drive and say, I know this can last under typical usage for three years, for five years, for 10 years, and rate the drive accordingly. No manufacturer wants to lose money, of course. So another way of looking at drives and comparing them to each other is to look at the warranty length. If the warranty on one is three years and another is 10 years, you can bet that the 10 year drive is probably used with a higher quality of memory and is expected to write greater volumes for a longer period of time. When you're looking at two different drive families and you've narrowed down the memory type and many of the other factors, the cost per gigabyte is a very effective way of looking at value one relative to the other. And the way you calculate that is some simple math. You take the cost of the drive, you divide it by the capacity of the drive, and you get the cost per gigabyte. So for example, if you have a 200 gig drive, which costs you $100, 50 cents per gigabyte, you could take another drive, which has a different set of figures and compare the numbers you get with that one. And what you might notice in looking at specifications on a vendor site is that the higher you go in capacity, the better the rated performance for the drive is. And this is um, actually a real thing. The idea being that if you have more cells on a drive, you can have more of them operate in parallel and therefore get faster speeds. And this tends to come into play more with NVMe PCI Express drives, which have a higher potential high-end throughput than with a SATA drive. But it's something that you may notice and it is a real thing. When you're shopping for an SSD today, one brand name that you'll run into is Intel's Optane, and there's a little bit of a subtle distinction between different types of Optane drives that's good to know about if you're shopping for an SSD. What we have here is um, an Optane M2 SSD, which can serve as a boot drive and stands alone as a drive. Um, now you'll notice that this is an M2 form factor, and it looks identical to the Optane drive that's inside this system here. Now the system here has an Optane drive, but it serves a different purpose. It's what's known as Optane memory. And the name is a little bit misleading. Optane memory is not system memory, but what it is is it's a cache for a hard drive. It could also be a cache for another SSD, but in this case, it's for a hard drive. The idea there is that dynamically, the system puts the most frequently used data on the Optane memory drive. The thing to bear in mind, again, is that Optane memory is a cache. An Optane SSD, like the Optane SSD 8 we have here, is a standalone SSD drive. When you're shopping, don't mix them up. So we've gone through a lot of the things that you need to factor in when you're buying an SSD for an upgrade or for a PC build. But one thing to think about is, do you need to upgrade at all? So if you have a system that has a hard drive, chances are that any SSD you put in there, whether it's a SATA SSD or a PCI Express SSD, which has much higher throughput, will feel much faster than a hard drive and is well worth upgrading to. But one thing to bear in mind, if you haven't had experience with SSDs, is that some cheap systems, uh, tablets and two-in-ones and inexpensive laptops, use a type of memory known as eMMC. 
Um, that's basically a cheaper form of flash memory that's much slower than an SSD, and you shouldn't confuse it with a true SSD. So there you have it, a 101 level primer on how to buy an SSD and what you need to know when shopping. For more reviews, roundups, and SSD buying information, visit PCMag.com.